Hey, what's up? Today I want to have a look at the full bleed layout. Full bleed layout just references how this image is going all the way to the edge of the screen. We've got no padding on this side, but we do have padding over here. Uh, something I see, problems I see a lot with people doing this design are responsiveness. Is that as you come down in screen size, the somebody building a next section, the padding here doesn't match the padding over here. Uh, another thing I see is for larger screen sizes that will have issues with orphaning this um, this text content here. A good example of that would be Google Meet. So I'm on the Google Meet lander right now. Their page looks fine on my MacBook Pro 16 inch. But if I up this to not 300, 3000 pixels, you can see there's way too much white space going on here. So we will have a look at how to implement this layout in Webflow today. Close this down. We've got Webflow open. We're going to build this in client first, the version 2. All I did was clone their example here, and I've got two images that we're going to use. So let's get started. I'm going to start by deleting everything under main. Let's drag in a div, call it section header. And then we're not going to use any global padding or um, container right now. I'm just going to drag in a grid. We'll delete this second row. The grid we can call header underscore component. I'm going to make the gap zero pixels by zero pixels. And we've just got one FR by one FR. That's great. We're happy with that. Let's make our sub divs here. This will be header content and throw another div in there, header image wrap. And let's throw the image in there. Image is in. And let's put some stuff within header content. Okay, so typically we're gonna want an H1. Just copying, pasting text right here. And then under the H1, we'll put some copy. And then we can throw a button in there. Get planting. Got it. OK. And now you can see everything. We haven't really styled anything yet. But this image, we want this to take up 100% of the width. That's great. And we're actually going to let the image control the height of this whole container. So what I like to do is we'll make it 100 viewport height units. So it'll take up the whole viewport height. But we don't want it to go for every screen. If somebody has a really tall screen, we don't want this thing to stretch infinitely. So we'll give it a max height of something like 60 rem. You won't see it here on the page. You can see, see if I get rid of this. At the bottom here, I have just a little bit of white space. That's because that's 60 rem right there. OK. And then we don't want to stretch it, so we'll change this to cover. And we'll set this position to something like the top. I like, actually, let's do the top left. Webflow's doing some weird stuff right now. Uh, OK. And then we don't want this to be a full bleed here. We want this, normally, when I'm using like a global padding, I like to set a, uh, I like to set it based on viewport width. So actually, within header content, we're going to set a, um, we'll call this header padding. We'll give this five viewport widths on one side. And we want it to stay away from the image here. So something like four rem. This one's not going to scale with viewport. And we'll drag each of those under there. OK, that's starting to look good. This header content now, I'm going to change this to flex vertical. And I'm going to center everything so that the text is in the center. I'm going to go back to our body and go to body all pages going to make the text something a little more floral friendly. And we'll just come off the, the full black here. Something like that for our text looks good. And the button will just make it colorful. Eh, no, that's too dark. Still too dark. Sure. For all H1s, give this bottom margin of 1 rem. And for all paragraphs, we'll give this a bottom. You could wrap these in margin bottom. Um, 
In fact, why don't we do that since this is client first? More bottom. More, I think small is one. Yeah, one rem. And we'll just put heading one in there. And we'll put heading one back to zero rem bottom margin. And we'll do the same thing for the paragraph here. Margin bottom, margin small, and take our paragraph, go back to all paragraphs, make this zero. Okay. Uh, if we preview this, it's looking all right so far. So let's go ahead and publish and have a look though. The Webflow designer was giving me problems with yeah, see, it just makes my whole design go away when I actually try to preview it here. So I'll be publishing and doing the preview on publish. Okay, let's inspect this. You can see now this left content is taking up all of that half of the space. So what we want to do is we want to constrain the box that all of this lives. We're going to use the utility class of max width for that, and then we're going to push it to one direction or the other. So to constrain the width, I'm going to wrap... Let's see, I'll wrap all of this. Within max width, uh, let's say medium, what's that, 32 rem? And then this header content, rather than, I'm gonna set the justify to the right, so it's gonna push it to the right side of the box. And we have that four rem of padding on the right side to keep it from getting too close to the image. So let's have a look now and see how it looks. Okay, so now we see something that's looking a lot better. I would even maybe make that uh, max width medium. I'd make this a max width large. Let's do something like that and publish. Okay, and that's looking a lot, that's looking pretty nice. So we're good to go there. This is being really nice and responsive. I'm gonna show you how to build the next section out. So let's just grab, and this will build more in kind of your typical client first section system. Section underscore, we'll just call this next for now. This is gonna have padding global, and I'm gonna change this to five viewport widths to match what I was using earlier. And then we will add a container large. And next we will put in the padding vertical and we'll do padding huge. Okay, let's drag in another grid. Delete this bottom row. Call this next underscore component. And we're gonna do the same thing next underscore image wrap. The image is gonna be on the left this time. And then on the right side, we'll have next underscore content uh, wrap, I suppose. Put an image here, next underscore image. Put this nice flower here, not flower, leaf, I suppose. And I'm not going to focus on what we do with this, really. Sorry, I don't have any fancy content for you here. But in, I would wrap these in margin bottoms as well. But we'll go ahead and make that our next heading. And the image will have this control the size, too. We'll say height, uh, something like maybe you want that to take up 80 viewport heights or maximum height 50 rem make this definitely smaller than the uh, than the header because the header should be the focus of the design right and make that 100 percent okay and now a lot of folks will throw in their their spacing system here but that's kind of it's dividing this exactly in half so something we can do is set this back to zero and then just on the image wrap we'll add our are padding there. So that'll make this line up if that's how you want to do it. Uh, there's there's a couple of options you could do. You could remove 
this so that it lines up there and then add your padding to this side. And that might look pretty nice. It's just going to depend on your design. Do that for, I kind of like that. And something you'll notice is that we're getting, once this hero section comes and compresses, we're going to get a really nice um, line there that that makes everything work. And then the image, I also just noticed it was scaling, so we'll set that to cover. You can choose where it's from. We'll set it to the middle. Go ahead and publish. All right. And so we got this scaling up big time. And then when we scale down, it's looking good. We can go ahead and look at some, I would, you know, control this height based on your content. The content should really be controlling how, how big you're making these images and that sort of thing. So it's gonna change based on your design, but once you know the principles, oh, I think I need to refresh, then you'll be good to go. Okay, so one thing I did wanna look at real quick was responsiveness. So all we're gonna do is we'll just delete this column and we'll give this, I don't know, two room, is that enough? No, four. And the content is gonna need some padding now at the top. Just give that full room for now. I would reduce the size of this, definitely quite a lot. That looks nice. And then this one as well, we're gonna delete that column give this a two rem border, two rem there. Not border, um, spacing. And now we gotta remove this padding here. So we'll just set that to zero. We can make this, that it's a little bit, it's quite a bit long. I would, I would reduce the, the max width on that for sure if this were production. And then the other thing is you have an image followed by an image, not really ideal. So we'll just come into our next component, our grid here, and we'll come to the, let's do the child that we want to come first, which is this content wrap. And we'll go ahead and make that first. And then it just pops up there. And that's how you do it. I'll make this clonable. I will add um, timestamps for all the places that I think are significant, where we discuss different things. And if this helps, please like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. And that's it. Talk to you soon.